You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz After Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's The Challenge After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424 256 1729. That's 424 256 1729. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's The Challenge After Show. You've taken a thousand selfies. Literally today, I've taken a thousand selfies. And for you uh, <laughs> iTuners out there, selfies is when Roxy gets bored and takes pictures of herself and then posts them on Instagram. Okay, I don't post them. I just go and look through them later. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what up, After Buzzers? Bing is for doing a We Are Here doing another After Buzz TV after show for MTV's The Challenge Battle of the Seasons. And we're back, finally. And we're back. It felt like, a like it hasn't been on for a while. Yeah, two weeks, you know. Our heart breaks every time that I know Phoenix. I need my I need my my fix of oh, the challenge. I'm DJ Jesse, joined in studio with Roxy Stryan. Hello. I might have already said that. Sorry. I just can't get off all the name no, calling I think that, that happened. You just said that I like to take selfies. You didn't actually introduce me. <laughs> so now that we've got that cleared away. The lady with the red lipstick likes to take selfies. All right, um, we were kind of waiting for this episode. I know la uh, last time we spoke with Devin, she we kind of built this up to this episode was going to be crazy and everyone gets in a fight. I wish we saw some more of the fights that went on in the house. You mean some more from the season or the more of the fight that we saw? Well, that night, uh, Devin said everyone got into a fight. Even she got into a fight. Right. Um, but I guess they focused mostly on the story of I Dustin. mean, it was confusing enough as it was. I it couldn't was. even tell what the f was going on. Like. Um, all right, so before we get into that, let's talk about the challenge. It was abandoned ship. How did you feel about this? Uh, uh, San Diego killed it. They did. I was glad that we started with them. Each person says one positive and one negative thing about each other. Uh, well, sometimes you got to do No, it was actually kind of sweet, and it seemed to actually help because they killed it. Honestly, I've never had a problem with her before the episode tonight, but Trishel, <laughs> you blew it. You really did. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't understand. Did we eventually see Marie get the 25-foot one? Because Yeah, uh, Rob was messing up at the beginning. He couldn't make it to the bottom, so he decided to grab the the 20-foot one, and then Marie went down and grabbed the 25. Or Rob might have grabbed the 15. 15. Yeah. Here, okay. P um, pools are usually, like, 14 feet deep, and I can, like, barely skim the bottom. Maybe because there's a rope, you can pull yourself down more, but... 25 feet is a bear. Well, yeah, but you also have to think they're jumping off of a ship. Like, that's a, that, that's going to propel you a little further no, than they, jumping. They jump off the ship into the water, and then they have to go. It's like No, they, right, but I'm saying jumping that high is, I, I feel like it would give you the extra momentum to go a little deeper than, you know, like a 14. No, I don't think it was that close. I think they had to jump into the water, then swim out to where it was, then free go down. <laughs> oh wow! Because that's why they had to keep starting. Otherwise, I think they would have kept jumping off and jumping. Oh well, because for me, the way JD did it, it oh, looked. Oh, that's true. But I mean, whatever. Everyone's techniques are different. Um, but then, yeah, Trishel couldn't go underwater. Maybe she has a breathing issue because this is the second time she's complained about, about shortness of breath and about water. Remember last time she didn't want to compete in the thing that tipped you over and you ended up in the water. Mm-hmm. But still, you she's know, she's not a fierce competitor. You got to own up, right? And she talks like she uh, owns up, but she... mm, mm, I girl. didn't see a girl. I didn't see a girl. So they got a five-minute penalty because of that. Now we talked about this with Sam a couple weeks back when um, Frank and Zach were on her case about not getting up the hill fast enough. How did you feel about Alton and Dustin uh, talking about um, 
Trishelle. Trishelle. Honestly, I think when you're in the moment and you're that frustrated and whatever's going on, it's like, how do you hold yourself back? I don't know if I would have been able to do that. Um, and I, honestly, if she'd been trying, I think they would have been supportive, but she wouldn't even go underwater. I mean, she was standing there not trying at all. So it's like, I think they were just like, just go under, just okay, go under. But the comment, a woman should be quiet and listen to her man. I mean, I think that Alan should literally like, go jump off a bridge. He pisses me off so much. That's effed up. We should play that. The views of After Buzz do not whatever, yeah, you know. Life I don't I don't really mean that he should go jump off a bridge, but I So mean, what, but uh, Dustin he, was using spoiled His exact girl. quote was a woman should at least be quiet and listen to her man. Mm. Suck my dick. <laughs> Seriously, like oh, snap. What kind of comment is that? Yeah. Well, yeah, like, and then de but de and then it was just kind of devil's advocate. There? No, there's I right. mean, there's no devil's advocate with that. I mean, first of all, neither of you are her man. One, two, if she's sitting there, I, I, the way Rob and Marie were, Rob clearly said. Um, and I wish I could go back and rewind it. I, I know we were rushing it. Um, Rob clearly said, "I can't make this one," so Marie jumped down to the bottom. And got that one. So maybe she just might get the ten, the five footer or the ten footer. No, it was, it was fifteen. Was the shallowest, I think. No, there was a ten foot one too. Oh, it was ten, fifteen, twenty. So maybe go send her to get the ten foot one. Or you know, I mean, work with her. I I, I think that we saw with Sam and Zach that working with the person kind of. Or have her look at them and say, "Listen, guys." Uh, she should say, "I'm not going to be able to do this." So rather than waste more time before the five minute penalty, just go. Because they wasted five minutes and then decided to take the five-minute penalty. So it was really ten minutes. Right. Um, know yourself enough to know if you're going to be able to do it or not. Yeah, I'm a devil's advocate of just the fact of you never put yourself in that situation. I know you're supposed to go in with the fierce competition as, as, as a fierce competitor, but I just... In the middle of the game, I don't think that's the time to be fighting or yelling at somebody because that doesn't push them to do more. Yell at them afterwards. Be, be like, nope, don't talk to me. You're done. That was disrespectful to the team. You were not a team player. Right, so what but should they the have moment, said? Like she said, the first thing she said, no one asked me if I was okay. Get it out the way. Just be like, are you okay? What are you? What's going on? They weren't, you know what I mean? But I don't I know if I believe it. that because then she said that Dustin said to her, sit your ass down, and he was like, I didn't say that. I think in the heat of the moment, maybe they were like, are you okay? And she was like, yeah. And then they were like, then go. If they really didn't say, are you okay, then that's aft. Um, should we take a caller? We'll do it? All right, we'll take a caller. Uh, I want to know what, what they think of this uh, Tricelle situation. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you from? Yeah, it's Steamer. What's going on, guys? Oh. What up? St oh, Steamer decides to join us. Steamer, hey, you, where have you yeah, been? Yeah, where have you been? I'm currently in my car, freezing my ass off. Oh. I had to call in that badly. Oh, we love you, Steamer. We do. What did you think of this episode with the whole Trishel situation? I know you were pissed I, I off. I kind of felt bad for her. Ooh. But at the same time, it was kind of whack how she played it. Like, I understand, like, when she fell in the water and she, she couldn't do it, she wanted them to say, are you all right, rather than just ragging on her. Right. So I understand it from that perspective. Like, don't rag on her. Just try to, you know, be positive and try to... Get her through it, but at the same time, the way she hands out the end, I mean, that's all on her. Uh, agreed. Uh, do you think that? I mean, you've seen Chichelle compete before. Do you think that if they had used yeah. a positive strategy, it would have helped the situation? I don't know. It, it might not have, but at the same time, what they were doing definitely wasn't going to work, and it just. It just spurs her on more to not do it. It's and, the way she is. So. And I feel like it also spurred her to not want to actually compete in the arena. If you were nicer to her, you could have been like, well, you know, Nani got the. If you mess buoy. up, period, end of sentence, you should throw yourself in regardless of what the competition is. I, I don't understand that. I know. I think that that was so baller of Nani. Like, so. I mean, we're not there yet, so I'll wait to talk about that, but. Girl just won my heart. Even uh, though early in the episode she lost right. it. 
Well, okay, but <laughs> speaking, that's uh, so actually funny you're talking about warming your heart. Uh, if you guys out there in the AfterBuzz world feel like warming somebody's heart up, warm ours here at AfterBuzz. Uh, I know we talked about Amazon so many times, but it's Christmas time, so you guys are probably doing a lot of online shopping. So if you are, to help AfterBuzz out, come go to AfterBuzzTV.com, click the Amazon button, and make all your purchases through that. No extra fees. It just helps us keep the lights on for our help Christmas Help me party. help, help you. Yes. So Amazon <laughs> on AfterBuzz TV. Um, okay, so the drama in the house started with Nanny sitting down and arguing with uh, okay, I didn't Derek. Even, Nanny was sitting there and she was like, Derek, you're not my friend. And he was like, what are you talking about? I am your friend. And then she was like, Frank, you're not my friend. And Frank was like, yes, I am. Yes, I am. And then she was like, no, you're not. And then I'll, I, from there, okay, here's what I've got. <laughs> I had What's to write the breakdown? It down. So, Nani was yelling at Derek, and then I said, "About what? I don't know." Then Marie pushes Frank off of Nani, and then Derek pushes Rob, but Marie comes to Rob's defense to push Derek, who falls backwards into Sam, and then Marie is yelling at Frank. Um, I think Sam was okay, <laughs> and that was really. And then the oh, and then the Dustin gay porn yelling started, and then Dustin pushed Frank, and then Frank got back in Dustin's face. But really, Frank was yelling at Dustin first, and yes, you did do gay porn, Dustin. So you're gonna have to deal with it for the rest of your life. Um, that, right. that was well, the let's, fight. Let's yeah. let's, all right, let's so break that, was that down. The let's break it down. Okay, so all right. Steamer's like, yeah. He's like, what? So obviously everyone's drunk now. This whole nanny versus Derek and Frank. No. <laughs> This whole uh, against Derek and Frank thing should have been diffused by somebody instantly. Zach was trying. He's always trying to defuse. I kind of feel like he was trying later in the situation. I didn't. Yeah, that's true. I feel like Rob tried to do it, and then he started to. And this is the thing. When everyone's drunk and you're trying to defuse a situation, but then you get involved with, or something hits you like out of the blue. All of a sudden, your clarity goes away, and then Rob starts well, wanting to but fight. Why people. did Derek push Rob? Oh, because Rob was pulling Derek off of somebody else. Right. Um, right. He picked him up off uh, off of the ground, off of Sam. When? Uh, oh no, that was after. No. <laughs> Derek was in somebody's face, and and Rob pulled him back, and Derek to like get him away, like pushed him, and Rob fell to the ground. Even it, though Rob was just trying to help. It was like a football rumble. I enjoyed it. And then it. Marie's like, get off my man! <laughs> like, um, I thought it was interesting, Sam <laughs> wanting to fight Marie. I kind of actually wish that that actually Sam wanted down. to fight Marie? Yeah, because she was the one who knocked yeah. her into the pot and oh, gave right. her the, the cut arm. Um, right. What, what, did, what was your whole take on this steamer? I was confused by the whole thing. Like, I didn't understand where it started from. So, obviously, like, editing, they take the put us in there like in the middle of nowhere like in the middle of nowhere like I don't know how the conversation started like Nani was just sitting there like chill and it's like she's going off on Frank and Derek but what I liked out of it all was Marie I, I got a lot of respect for her just like defending Nani just regardless of who was attacking her she was she was defending her friend yeah cause she pushed and, Frank and she got involved yeah she, she, she was and she became like the main participant in it when she was going after Derek for pushing down Rob, so yeah. I got a lot of respect for her loyalty. So I, I completely agree. She said, you know what, for a second, this wasn't about gameplay. It was about sticking up for my friend, mm -hmm. and yeah. I liked that a lot, but I was with you, Steamer. It was so out of the blue that I was like, MTV, what the hell? Give us some sort of context or something. Like, where that yeah. left field. Like, and the the funniest part of it was after when Trishel, Frank, and Nanny went down to t try and talk it out, it turned into, like, this weird, like... Nani and Dustin are like doing this crazy laugh, like, <laughs> <laughs> like what? Oh, you mad? Why are you mad? Frank's yelling, like ripping his hair out of his head. And, and my favorite line during this was when Dustin yelled back, "All you've got is your IQ." No, when he is said, it, no, "All you've got is your porn muscles." <laughs> yeah, that was good too. But all you've got is your IQ. 
that's like one of the biggest compliments you could give somebody. All you got is your brains. Like, usually people are like, oh. He, he, he added something onto that too. Is like your IQ, and then he said something else. I don't know what the, the other thing wasn't was. it the porn muscles? And you think you have muscles, but those are porn muscles. No, that was that was Frank to Dustin. Dustin yeah. said to Frank, "All you have is your IQ," oh. and I was like, hmm. Dustin, mm. I don't know if you're try if you're proving. And the problem is now we're midway through the season. I'm really liking Dustin. You guys have seen the last few weeks. I've been like, Dustin, Dustin, Dustin. You yeah. know that I love Frank, and the two of them like this is like an uh, internal issue for me. But I gotta say, you guys gotta come up with some better comebacks. Yeah, or f Frank <laughs> running around. Do you know who I am? Oh, I wrote. Do you know who I am? I, my least favorite thing is when people say, "Do you know who I am?" I'm like, if you ha if somebody knew who you were, you wouldn't have to say that. Right. I'm like feeling like texting Frank, being like, "Really?" We know I'm, that you're Frank. Like, we know that. Do you know who I am? You know, it's like it reminds me of when you're at a nightclub and somebody comes to the front of the line and can't get in. They're like, "Well, do you know who I am?" It's like, bitch. No, bitch. No. If we did, you'd yeah. be inside the club. I don't care. <laughs> I hate that you're line. The guy who's not in the club. Yeah, right. I just hate that um, line. But and then uh, interesting because I would like to ask Frank and Zach this. Um, Zach says he'll whoop Dustin's ass after he has a fat paycheck in his pocket. I would be interested to know if they would, if this beef and argument uh, still continues. Into well, remember when we had Frank on here? I know he was Frank like, wasn't too. He was like, if I Dustin. saw Dustin in the street, I would kill him. And mm -hmm. Zach said the same thing when he called in. <sighs> and I bet Dustin would say something similar. I don't know. And if you wouldn't, Dustin, give us a call and let us know. Yes, 424-256-1729. 17 And for you after buzzes out there, you guys can give us a call at 424-256-1729. We'd love to hear what you guys thought of the fight. Um, and for anyone who is not watching us live, we love that you guys are commenting on our YouTube. But we need your help. We need to get to number one on iTunes. And it's super easy. Take literally three minutes out of your day. Download, subscribe, comment, and rate, and do the Roxy dance. Number one, number one. We want to be number oh, we one. We are number one. And if you do that, <laughs> we'll give you a shout out. So just leave yeah. your leave your Twitter handle uh, with a comment. Um, so hit us up on it. Do you know who we are? Yeah. Do you know who we are? <laughs> um. Okay. Well, Trishel didn't want to go into the arena tonight with Elton. Understandable. Shocker. I didn't think it was fair for her to ask Dustin to go in, especially after Nani asked Dustin to go in. And it's like, should Dustin have to go in every time because Alton's being a dick? Okay, but let me ask you this. Let's say you messed up the challenge. And you're like, okay, look, I'll go in. I understand. I'm going to go in the arena. She's like, but, and I'm going to try my hardest, but... But Alton never said that. He never said he was throwing it. He just said, yeah, he had a bad attitude, but he obviously tried his butt off. I don't mind losing. Losing is fine. I don't want to compete with somebody who says that. I don't either, but you instead of this, I would sit down and talk to him and be like, you do mind losing, and here's why, here's what we're doing. Get his head in the right mood. Don't just be like, no, no, if he's not going in, I'm not going in. But why? They didn't try to get Trishel's head in the right mood. Because she fucked up. Well, that comment isn't a team player. That's kind of fucking up, too. Okay, I'm just, I just being don't, an I just asshole. Like I'm just her. being an asshole. I just didn't like her this episode. I mean, I never had a problem with her before, but we got Alton. Yeah, she was giving me we got some. Alton, Alton's like, I don't feel like babysitting. We got Trishel, who's like, I don't feel like babysitting. Guess what? You're both motherfucking babies. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Can we just rewind? Because I just saw a side comment that I write like crazy. Um, <laughs> just a side note to the fight earlier. Remember when Frank called Sam fat and she like really took that to heart? Yeah. I just think that's just a word that he calls people because he called Nanny fat, and she's far from Yeah, no, he was like, <laughs> he, he said, Nanny, you're being a fat fucking bitch. <laughs> that's like not she a... She's not at all. Yeah, I mean, girl has a rocking and he, body. And he also said that she's the one who needs attention. Yeah, Frank, you shouldn't throw any stones up people need the attention. Well, okay, mode, yeah, so. yeah, okay, I understand why you're saying that, Seymour, but I felt like in that situation, she was looking for some sort of weird attention. Right, we don't know how the argument started, so we don't actually know, but it, it seemed like it she just, just was, all of a sudden was, like, blowing it up. Yeah, and I felt like it had to do with um, maybe Derek and Fr Frank. I know they were hooking up on the show. Maybe they weren't hanging out with her as much or they were hanging out with somebody else more and that might have been where it came from um but so Chichelle doesn't want to go in with Elton um because of the way he was speaking I mean 
like like I said, why would you want to compete with somebody who makes this negative comment and then not only that, but then said to you, you're the woman, you should be listening to your man. Like, that's such a <laughs> negative way of going into a challenge. It's like I say, don't fight before the challenge. Don't fight during the challenge. Talk about it after. I don't care how much he's going to eventually chalk that up to editing. When you say you're a woman, the least you can do is be quiet and listen to your man. I mean, There's I no have no respect for you. Yeah, me like, either. Like, like, no. I'm sorry. Like, usually I'll say things about people on here, and I'm like, and then when they come in, I'm like, I'm sorry, you know what, I was a douche, or Zach called me a lady douche, whatever. I can apologize. <laughs> I can be wrong about people. I do not care. Even if he's a stand-up guy, you do not say that and get away with it. Like, Agree. Let's see if what the fans think. Uh, we have a caller on the line? All right, Carl, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you from? Hey, this is, uh, my name is Whitney. What up, Whitney? Hey, what's going on? Whitney, where are you from? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm from, I'm in Orlando, Orlando, Florida. All right. Ooh. Nice weather down there, hopefully. <laughs> what did you think of the challenge tonight, overall? Uh, the actual challenge, I thought it was great. I, I love this one. What did you think of the so, drama in the house? Watch. The drama. What the, what? the drama oh, the in drama. the house. Uh man. It was, um, it was, a, it was, like, almost too much to take in. It's like I wanted to watch all the fights one at a time. You know, it was, it was, it was weird. Like, I really wanted to see Marie versus Sam. But then Me I wanted too. to see Derek and Rob. But I don't know. They just kept going all over the place. All right. And final question. Where do you stand with uh, Trishel in this and the Alton situation and her not wanting to go in because of the way Alton spoke to her and how negative he was being about losing? Well, I actually think that he was, well, it sounded like he was actually being really positive to her, well, especially when she was arguing with Dustin because at first she was arguing with Dustin. And Alton was just saying behind her, saying all these positive things. Like, look, let's focus on the arena. Let's, you know, let's not even argue about this right now. And um, so, I don't know. It was kind of back and forth. It, and Alton made, like, one comment. But I actually thought he was, I felt like he was in a mindset to actually do his best this, in that arena. Yeah, uh, so I thought she just kind of used his excuse, like what he did a couple of weeks ago, as kind of a cop out, as saying that she didn't want to go in. But I, I felt like he was actually in a better mood this time to go in. Well, he I just he just didn't want to go in. I agree. I don't know if I thought he was in a better mood. I think he was less mad. But I think, I mean, we don't really see it all. And you know, the one thing Trishel said was Dustin and Alton are consistently crazy. Now I don't agree with that with Dustin. But with Alton, it is. It's so up and down. I don't care if I leave. I don't care if I go stay. I don't. Well, I need you to care. You know, I mean, I'm playing with you, and I don't want to go in this half-ass. I'm going to put my all into it. I want someone who's going to compete at the same speed as me. Because if you go into it thinking, I mean, I don't really care if I win or lose, you're not going to try as hard as, oh, no, I cannot lose this. You know, so I don't know. I'm kind of just up in the air with it. But did you think Trisha was uh, crazy this episode? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was so, like, I was really upset. Props to Nani, though, for really stepping up. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, I was I was kind of upset that she didn't, because she's, at this point, is the weakest link on that team. And she cost them a couple of missions. Okay. So she should go in. Whether it's with Alton or Dustin, she deserves to go in. No matter what, you know, Alton said, the guy is a great competitor and I've seen every single challenge he's done I've seen every single challenge Trishel has done and I would put money on Alton over Trishel any day she's Agreed. not someone I, I think Alton should be more worried going in with her <laughs> than her being worried going in with Alton because she's not that great of a competitor she's not and she's never experienced really she, she's lost every elimination she's been in, whereas Alton has won every single elimination he's been in up until this point. Very valid point. Well, Whitney, we want to thank you so much for calling in. I hope you're uh, subscribed to us on, on iTunes. Leave us a comment, and uh, we'll give you a shout-out next week. But thank you so much for calling in. and uh, we'll, All right, thank you, guys. We'll talk to you later. Um, 
So Trishel doesn't volunteer herself. Nanny does, like you said, congrats on her for doing that. And I loved how positive she was. She wasn't negative. She had a smile on her face. She was like, guys, it's good. It's good. It's she true. was so nice to Trishel. If I was Nani, I would have been like, <laughs> bitch. I mean, she was just like, it's okay. It's all love. And Dustin was like, it's not love. Live. Live with it. Live in nightmare. No you question. Live. Question. It was. <laughs> Do you think well, Nanny voted herself in because what's she with this wanted? Nanny. Isn't that Nanny? The nanny. I know. <laughs> I, it's from naughty. when we did the Real World. Uh, we used to have this. You make me think of like Fran Drescher, like the Nanny. I, I actually used to have a song to the theme song of the Nanny about Nanny. And I did it on, oh, seasons ago on the Real World. We gotta bring it back. Got to gotta go back in the uh, archives for that. Um, so, do you think that she did it because she wanted to step up? Or do you think she did it because she knew San Diego would have thrown her in? I don't think she would have been as willing to step up if she hadn't thought <laughs> that San Diego was going to throw her in. But, <laughs> but either way. it doesn't matter to yeah. me. Agreed. But it is a good point. Yeah. Um, so, it's the arena. They do the endurance game, which is the ball situation. And it's Nanny Alton versus Rob Marie. Dustin was just pissed off. Um, and him and Trishel arguing like little kids. Like, that's not positive for your teammates who are actually playing right now. You need to be cheering them on, rooting because the... Everyone else Trishel's is cheering like, on St. Thomas. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. And Dustin's <laughs> so like, funny. live forever. Live forever. <laughs> and I'm like, can both of you shut the hell up? Like, uh, I, honestly, I can't. So I don't even know what to say about that. But You will live. You will live you forever. You will live forever. Forever and ever. That was, that was scary. My voice? No. <laughs> Dustin, that was creepy. Nightmares forever. Okay, Dustin. Weird, <laughs> awkward. Um, all right, so round one, St. Thomas won 14 um, points. Round two, Vegas won. By mm. one. Yeah. Now, Roxy, you thought oh, who was going to oh, win? Oh, um, I feel embarrassed about this because I really do like the St. Thomas kids a lot. And I think it has to do with our, us rooting for the underdogs, but and maybe it was because I love Nani in this episode so much, and I didn't want Dustin to be left with Trishel, <laughs> even though Alton's an asshole and I really don't like him. I really wanted Nani to win because she volunteered herself. But I, any other given date, I would have wanted St. Thomas to win. Agreed. But I was really rooting for um, Vegas here. I really was. This one I was kind of rooting more for St. Thomas just because they did so bad at the challenge and Rob and Marie got in their little fight and, like, I wanted them to... Right. I just... Up. Nani just didn't deserve to go home this week, period, end of sentence. Agreed. Agreed. What did you think, uh, Steamer? I was rooting for Las Vegas. Like, just for the fact, I mean, I, I like Rob, I like Marie enough, but I was rooting for Vegas and I figured if they'd stay intact, they could have made a run in the tra in the uh, final challenge. Yeah. Because that was it now. There's no way San Diego is not winning that. It's, it's, it's never Brooklyn and Brooklyn... Brooklyn is not winning, so... Happy San Diego, and that's unfortunate. Really? Wait, why do you say? Why do you say Brooklyn really? can't win? I don't know. I just don't see. I, I don't see them as strong enough competitors like San Diego. I just see San Diego being being tougher. Obviously, San Diego has like some stamina problems, like in Sam, as we saw in, in the previous challenge, and Brooklyn has their own problems in Devon. But I just think overall, San Diego is a stronger team, and. Las Vegas was the only team that I thought could push them. And I mean, Brooklyn. Proven wrong, but Brooklyn was in the lead at first. Or was it Brooklyn or Cancun? No, Brooklyn yeah. was killing it. It, it. No, actually, it was Cancun that was first. At, at first, they got their life raft first, and then San Diego ended up paddling faster. So I mean, San Diego, you get more of a family feel. Brooklyn's kind of more of we're a team. But I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I I, I could see that actually. But I do think Brooklyn is. Something to compete with. Oh. I just don't understand Chet as a competitor, as a player, as a person. I don't get him. What's his storyline? What is like? I don't. I just don't understand him. Who are you? We don't even know you. <laughs> Chet, don't even go Chet, you. Chet could not walk around saying, "You know who I am." Yeah. He'd be like, "No, no." I really, <laughs> and I don't even mean that in a mean way. I just mean like, I, I like, I look at that team and I'm like, I literally, who who is this bow tie wearing kid? 
<laughs> like he's just gonna host an interview all of a sudden in the middle of the oh, channel. Oh, literally, I could just turn him, see him turning to JD, being like, "So, <laughs> how is this experience?" <laughs> what did you think? Um, all right, so St. Thomas is the winners. Vegas has to go Ooh. home, which is gonna be really interesting to see Dustin and uh, Trishel working together. <laughs> On that note, let's head into or, predictions. I mean, talking about predictions, yeah, we can move into them. I was going to say, what's going to go on with, is Dustin now, actually going to go home? You're after Buzz TV. <sighs> I mean, he gets up, and Dustin doesn't seem like somebody is backing down on his word, but in previous for next no. week, we did see them in, in the, the comp. So I wonder what happens. Um, I hope Trishel has nightmares, too. I also thought it was interesting. Kidding, Bro kind of. Brooklyn thought that uh, Dustin was being weird and saying to openly to Trishel, yeah, he's being acting weird. Because I think that he did seem you can weird. understand why he's upset. But he had that glazed over, like, yeah, but trance he always look. Looks like he was that. like, I just don't Whenever understand. the gay porn thing comes up, he just goes into this, like childhood like don't remind but me but i liked what that. he said this episode he was like it's all over the internet i have to live with it like instead of sometimes he's like it, it wasn't me and sometimes he's like whatever like and gets mad and then he did get mad anyway but he, i just wish he would have stuck his guns and been like yeah i did gay porn and yeah. then nobody can you just know. be gangster about yeah. it like yeah i did i don't anymore but i did it now what 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 <laughs> what um, is this whole tire competition item? It, yeah, it's like. Do you some, know who I am? Do you know who I am? Steamer, everybody knows who you are. Um, it's some tire yeah. game. They have to push each other off some sort of thing. It's I called don't know. horse something. But what I do want to go around before we end the show, who do you think is going to win? We know Steamer says uh, San Diego. Who do you think? You mean top three teams? Or, no, I, I think. Top two. Who do you think is going to be first and second place? San Diego, Brooklyn. San Diego, Brooklyn? Yeah, I think there's strength in numbers, and I, and I agree. I don't think Brooklyn can beat San Diego. I'm going to just be devil's advocate and say Brooklyn, San Diego. I'm going to do it. I think in the end, something's going to happen, and Brooklyn's just going to take it home for the win. Who do you think's going home next week, though? Robin Murray. Versus Cancun? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. There we go. Yeah, I think that Jeanne is just, like, fierce as fuck. Really? Marie is, too, actually, though. It, uh, that would be uh, quite the... I would love to see them in an uh, elimination. Right. Though. That would be fun. The two of them? Yeah, totally. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys follow us on AfterBuzz TV on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram now. Um, also, remember, if you guys are doing any Christmas shopping, do it through AfterBuzz. Go to AfterBuzzTV.com and, and click the Amazon banner and just type in your purchases. It helps us keep the lights on here at AfterBuzz. And also, please, please, please get us to number one on iTunes. Download, rate, subscribe, comment, and then do the Roxy dance. I'm the number one. I'm and the leave your one. Twitter handle so we can give you a shout out. Um, I'm DJ Jesse. You can follow me at Twitter on at DJ Jesse J. At Roxy Stryer. And uh, Steamer. At the Steamer. At the Steamer. Until next week, same time, same place. Peace. Peace. I stole your line. From Bit.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.